Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Marsha. <laughs> Once again, recording in the morning. Um, Mm -hmm. on the weekend that the episode is going out. (laughs) Yes. We need to, uh, it's, um, be, we need to be on our best speaking behavior here (laughs) Mm -hmm. because this is going to be live and unfiltered like the, um, like the hazy IPA that I had the other night (laughs) (laughs) or unfiltered apple cider or something. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, now I'm nervous. And I'm going to say <laughs> or do something that uh, I might get in trouble for. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I, <laughs> I'm so nervous now. Um, no, uh, I'll be very good. I'll be on my good behavior. We'll, it will make this uh, kind of succinct, right? Because um, we just need to talk about what we've been doing. You've been very busy. We don't need to go into huge detail, I'm sure, but you've been very busy with work and um, negotiations with the contract and um, that's been a huge, yeah, huge thing for you. All the organizing is very time consuming because mm-hmm. you have to, con- you have to make all these lists and then you have to contact people, right? Mm-hmm. And emailing them doesn't work because, well, it works for some people. And then you need to remind them and then you need to text them or call them and talk to them in person. And so you have to have all these lists mm-hmm. and, and so everybody's like claiming, you know, okay, I'm going to talk to these 10 people and I'm going to talk to these 10 people. And we've got over 200, Mm -hmm. um, maybe close to 300 people in our bargaining unit. So that's a lot of people to contact um, Mm -hmm. and then remind, you know, whenever you have an event, because you need to remind, people are used to getting a reminder. So we do have a Mm -hmm. um, somewhat, we're starting a somewhat automated system, but you know, it's, it's not, you have to learn it. And there's a, you know, there's a trade off. Do we just use the things we can use now or, and get it done? Or do we take the time to learn all the fancy stuff that will save us mm-hmm. time in the long run? And yeah, so that's kind of where we are. Mm-hmm. But so yeah, we're at impasse. The mediator comes this week to, uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully, get us out of get us out of impasse. So, yeah, yeah, we'll see. But we got a letter well, from the Senate from a senator. Um, oh, you urging did. our president to take advantage, take full advantage of the funding that the legislature, the California legislature, has put into the budget as ongoing funding to reimburse colleges one hundred percent for benefits for part time faculty. Mm-hmm. So our college wasn't wanting to participate in that program. So that was a pretty nice win this week, kind of uplifting, you know, a little boost that we mm-hmm. we had um, her write a letter to our college president saying, hey, we put this money in the budget for a reason. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, that's, I don't know, I guess progress. Well, yeah, nothing. It's progress is it, well. No, that's not really. It's not progress, but you're. You guys are. Everyone's talking still. I think that's never having been through this. I don't really know what it's like, but you're talking and trying to mm-hmm. figure something out. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah, and we got two hundred and sixteen signatures on our petition, which again, mm-hmm. a petition seems like a really small thing to ask people to do. Right, type your name in to mm-hmm. an electronic thing. Mm-hmm. But the number of mm-hmm. phone calls and texts and <laughs> emails that had to go out <laughs> to make that yeah. happen, um, you know, that's just that's just the way of the way of life. And it's not the kind of world mm-hmm. anymore where you can just walk around, at least not at the community college, where you can just walk yeah. around the campus and find everybody you need to find. Mm-hmm. You know, 
because we don't all teach at the same times. We're not all on campus. It, it, yeah. So that part is challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, I, for me, I've been really busy the last two weeks and of course, none of it is interesting or exciting or even fun. It's just, you know, I, I don't remember now if I mentioned this in the last episode, but plumbing stuff. Oh yeah. The rental <laughs> you did. And, yeah. And then, um, <laughs> I'm an, I won't even I'm talk telling about you that. that I'm telling you that now so that when you listen again, you're not going to have to tell yourself to stop talking about plumbing. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I have to tell you something. Okay. So, um, so that's, but that's resolved. That's resolved. And then I don't know if I mentioned this, but the, the rental house, there's a one car garage in the back that the tenants have not had access to because my son was still, Ben was still, um, storing, Oh, like a motorcycle lift and motorcycle parts and whatnot in there. So he had cleared that out probably a month ago or two months ago. And But there was still some stuff that I had to take to the dump. And I have to say, honestly, I don't like going to taking stuff mm-hmm. to the dump or as we call it here, the transfer station. That's the, the PC way of saying um, dump. <laughs> transfer Mm -hmm. station it has changed though i will say years ago it was all just went into one big uh pile now when you go with your debris they ask you what it is and they actually have you sort out things but anyway i cleaned out the garage and um i've got when they put the new windows in um the windows on either side of the fireplace the moldings didn't fit anymore so i bought some moldings from the the architectural salvage place but i'm having to clean up those moldings so i've been working on that and um so just like all these little things Mm -hmm. and i've got some trips coming up which i'll talk about later so planning doing research on that and i know there's just been a lot going on just little things that just sort of suck up time right you know but uh nothing bad all good um but i what i started to laugh is your comment about like, I'm going to stop you there so you don't have to listen back and say, okay, <laughs> stop talking about the plumbing. Because do you remember what I said? Um, this is many, many episodes ago, like I have to stop talking about the basement. Yes. <laughs> Working in my basement. And um, uh, one night this week, uh, Ben and I had dinner and he was talking about how he wants to do fun things with me. And so instead of when we get together now, sometimes we have to work on a project. It has to help me with something around the house. And he said he wants to start doing fun things. So he went for a bike ride on Friday. His girlfriend just bought for $50, which is very inexpensive. She bought a tandem bicycle. Oh, wow. An old thing, so old that it has it doesn't have the index shifting. It has like the levers like you, like I have on my old bike. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. So we went on, Ben and I we took it out for a ride on the Berkeley Trail um, on Friday, and it was super fun, really fun. And um, and you really get booking pretty fast when you have a 25-year-old pedaling up in front. <laughs> and I just, I'm pedaling, but, you know, he's strong. Oh, he's, and then finally, he's, just, he's finally pedaling his own weight, huh? Yes, I know. After and all those thinking, years in that we... Surrey where he wanted to pedal, yes. and when he finally could, he wouldn't. <laughs> yes, yeah. I know. Well, good. But I'm anyway, glad to hear his, it. <laughs> his his comment when we were sitting at the dinner table when he said he wanted to start doing fun things with me, he said like I don't want to like work in the basement because you're always working in the basement. And I thought, <laughs> oh yeah, remember I was not going to talk about that basement anymore. <laughs> it's funny. Mm. I just started laughing when he said that. <laughs> anyway, okay. Well, um, should we talk? Are we ready to talk projects? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. Do you want to go first, or yeah, I'll go first, or should I go? F- Okay. I'll go ahead and go first. So what I'm working on right now, and as you were as you were talking about not talking about the basement, I realized I'm working on a sock and I had finished mm-hmm. the heel and I realized that while we were sitting here I had picked up stitches for the gusset without turning the heel. This is why this oh. has been sitting in my bag for so long because I needed to basically needed to turn the heel. I just picked it up and went, oh, good. I'm ready to <laughs> pick up the... So I have now I set it aside. I pulled all this, the the needles out of it. And I was trying to pick up the stitches back onto the needles while I was talking. But I have decided that I'm just setting it aside with no needles in it. And when we're done talking, <laughs> I'll put it back together. <laughs> I, have to, I did that once on a pair of socks oh I, with the whole gusset. And then I'm like... 
that looks really weird. And then I was like, I didn't turn the heel. <laughs> I was so excited that I actually was getting back to these socks um, mm -hmm. to knit on during the podcast. And I thought, okay, good. Mindless, you know, just regular sock knitting. Mm -hmm. Oh, time to pick up. Well, maybe I can pick up the stitches before we get too far into it. And yeah, no. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I guess it happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those, one of those probably common common mistakes so mm -hmm. but other than those socks i have nothing on the well actually i don't have those socks on the needles either right now because i pulled all the needles out of them <laughs> <laughs> i have nothing nothing on the needles well i do have that sweater i i need to get that linen sweater back out but anyway mm -hmm. i finished the baby blanket is my point finally finish that baby blanket. I saw your picture on Instagram and it's so pretty. I it's like really it. Nice. Yeah, I really like it's very it. Very nice, yeah. So now I'm I'm like, okay, can I do something? It's not as nice a yarn, but it always feels better that acrylic once you wash it. Um mm -hmm. the the stuff that's left in the back, I was like, okay, could I do something really could I get something, you know, that will turn out that good from the rest of the colors that are in here? Um, but I didn't get inspired when I took a look at it. So I don't know. And Betty used, mm -hmm. there was a rust colored yarn that she used to make a pumpkin. And that was really pretty. And she had this kind of gold color for the leaf and the stem. And so that turned out really mm -hmm. cute. Um, so I might make a pumpkin. Um, I might copy her idea and make a pumpkin, but, but what I'm, um, what I'm really thinking I'm going to do <clears throat> in, in my sock bag, I had some leftover sock yarn and I found, I, I have those mini skeins that I bought from weird sisters and I've got some mini skeins that I brought home from, uh, from the knockers retreat. And then of course I have just leftovers, not a lot of leftovers, mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to get that pin loom out and put it, by the couch where I sit in the evening and mm -hmm. make some squares. So I got the video. Okay. Um, Hazel, Hazel from Hazel Rose actually uh, posted in our, in our Ravelry group, um, her video that she has for how to use the, the pin loom. So I'm going to go watch that video. And um, remember, cause I, I was trying to, I, I did it at knockers with the square one, but basically I just did it like a warp back and forth. And then I needle mm -hmm. wove the other direction. So it was not on the bias, but mm -hmm. the real way to a better way to use these looms, these square pin looms is on the bias. Um, and so okay. you're weaving as your warp, your, you don't just warp and then do the weft. You're like doing it both at the same time. So, you okay. go up and down and that's a warp and then you go across the pins mm -hmm. and then you go up mm -hmm. and down again and that's a warp and then a, or you go up and that's a warp and then you go across as a weft. So you're constantly both warping and weaving at the same time. So mm -hmm. I do have a video to watch. Thank you, Hazel, for um for posting that. Uh, and I think I'm going to do that today. It's It's cloudy and drizzly and... Yeah, I Perfect might. Perfect day to stay yeah. in and do this type of yeah. thing. Yeah, I walked the dogs yeah. yesterday. So at least I'm going to get it started so and get, you know, the knowledge so that when I sit down mm -hmm. at the end of the day and I don't have the energy to go put this sock back on the needles. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I have I have something that I can some a mindless kind of mindless project that I that I can work on and and I'll put a little basket of all my little scraps and I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how they might all go together. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about um, Cindy Q's blanket that she made all out of the pin loom woven yeah. squares. I might not get a blanket. I might just get a pillow or something. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna. That's gonna be one of my pro my weaving projects. So, so yeah, no, um, uh, nothing on the needles. But another thing finished yesterday. Um, I took some time 
and I plied up. Well, first I, well, I'll talk about Lambtown a little bit more in a, in a bit, but first I wound off, I, I, what you call bound. I used a silk thread to bind the boucle that I made during my class. And then I pulled uh -huh. it off the, pulled it off the bobbin. There's not very much. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a, it was a short, you know, it was a, like a three hour class and boucle is three. You have to do, you have to do three different things. <clears throat> anyway, mm -hmm. there's three different parts to it. Uh, so, you know, we didn't get a chance to make very much boucle, um, but I pulled yeah. that off the loom and I'm going to wash or off the spinning wheel and I'm going to wash it today. And then I plied the last bit of that peacock blue, blue green, um, the singles that I had from the Merino Targi Corydale cross that I was spinning all summer. Mm, okay. And, uh, and carding. And so mm -hmm. I have this skein to go with the purple skeins. And I think there's another uh, orange. I think I also have orange skeins. Anyway, so that's finished, except it has to be washed. So, mm -hmm. so that's all the yarn stuff. But I also have <clears throat> a little more of an update on my Swint bath project. Yes, I'm dying to hear about this and how it smells mm -hmm. too. <laughs> so the 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 first one, the you know, the first one I did, I said, okay, it doesn't smell. It once it was dried, it didn't smell. The Romney, I took the Romney out, or the I uh, the dark part of my Romney fleece. I took it out of the swim bath probably right after we recorded last week or 2 weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Um and maybe about 10, 12 days ago, something like that. And mm -hmm. stuck it on, rinsed it off, and then stuck it on the screen. And then put my, um, a portion of my fleece from Lambtown into the Swint bath again. So mm -hmm. the Romney stayed there until yesterday. <laughs> On the screen drying, which meant it was drying mm -hmm. out during the day and then getting wet and drizzled on or dewy at night. Um, I didn't do that on purpose. I just didn't get around to pulling it in. And then I would see it in the morning when I let out the dogs when it was still wet. And I think, oh, I got to get this in this afternoon. And then I'd forget. So it sat out for probably 10, 12 days getting... <laughs> wet and then dry and then wet and then dry. And honestly, it smells pretty good. Um, I put it away yesterday and it has an odor, but I don't think it's the Swint bath odor. I think it's just sort of unwashed fleece odor. Um, mm -hmm. Not, again, it's not strong. But it doesn't smell as clean as, or it doesn't smell as lanolin-y as the first mm -hmm. one that I took out of the swim bath, that East Frisian. So I don't know. I, so is, do you think maybe part of it is that it's a different fleece? Yeah, I do. Yes. Okay. I think that it has to do with the fact that it's a less lanolin-y fleece to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't super dirty, but it just, yeah, it. It smells sheepy, and and it might have been a ram fleece. I don't mm -hmm. remember, and that might make a difference too. So mm -hmm. I am going to. I do think um, that. So the East Frisian, I'm going to spin a little bit in the grease, and I'm going to spin the. I'm going to wash the rest of it and spin the bulk of it washed, but just so I can mm -hmm. you know experiment. The Romney, I am going to put it in a. Unless I use it, if I use it for a weaving project, maybe I won't wash it. I was thinking I might just use the locks because I wanted to make mm -hmm. some more of those dog bed, th those rugs, you know, the lock woven rugs mm -hmm. to use for the dogs. So depending on what I do with it, it's not the better part of the fleece. It was the, it was the coarser and darker mm -hmm. part of the Romney fleece. So so I might just use I might just use those locks in a weaving project, and I won't wash them first, um, and then and then I'll just wash the rug when I'm done. 
and that might that would be fine. So so the bath got smellier and I can't say for sure that I think the fleece smells great. It doesn't smell mm-hmm. bad. It doesn't smell sulfury and fermented, but it just doesn't smell mm-hmm. the same way as the East Frisian because I think it just doesn't have as much lanolin. That lanolin smell I mm-hmm. really like. So then when I went to Lambtown, and I'm just going to take a little side track and talk about Lambtown for a minute before I talk about what's in the swim bath now. So I went to Lambtown, super fun, at a great time. I so- started the morning um, in the parking lot before my class, and I'm getting my stuff out of the car, and I put down my, I have this this box, wooden box, like basket, but it's but it's made out of wood that I keep my spinning mm-hmm. tools in. Has a mm-hmm. lid that, you know, flaps up. Anyway, I get that out and I set it on the ground and I start to get my spinning wheel out of the car. And a woman comes up to talk to me and she says, oh, I love your box. That's so cute. And I'm like, oh, thank you. And then she's, she says, you're Kelly. You know, recognize me. <clears throat> and sa- and mm-hmm. I said, yeah. Anyway, it was one of our listeners. Her name's Kara. Oh, nice. Shout out to Kara. And um, she she actually, it turned out, was friends with Pelly or Mimi Fan, who I bought the class mm-hmm. from. Okay. So we started talking small world, right? Um, she mm-hmm. was there with with her friend Joyce and and Mimi. And they were gonna um they were taking a different class that Mimi had meant to buy when she bought this boucle class that I had. So we're talking, she's like, okay, that room is so cold. You are going to need a shawl because I just had a mm-hmm. tank top because I was just in glory that I could be wearing a shorts and a tank top at, you know, eight in the morning. <laughs> it was like nine, mm-hmm. 90, going to be 90 something degrees that day. And she's like, that room is so highly air conditioning. You're going to be cold. Do you want to borrow my shawl? I'm like, no, I think I'll be okay. If I get too cold, I'll buy a sweatshirt. She's like, really? Sh- sure. Anyway, a little later in the day, she, she, um, or a little, little later that morning, she was actually in the classroom dropping off some stuff um, in the classroom for her class later. She's like, last chance. Sure, you don't want to borrow the shawl? I'm like, yes, I want to borrow the shawl. It is cold in here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I had this beautiful shawl that she had made, that Kara had made, um, that I wore while I took the the uh, the class. And and then I, of course, I had to deliver the shawl back. So after class, mm-hmm. I found them, um, and so they were all sitting having having lunch together. And so I sat I sat with them, and and um, Mimi had made me a cookie. Oh my god, good chocolate chip and walnuts. She's like, oh, I made I made this cookie for you, and it, it was it was delicious. So that's I I sat and mm-hmm. ate the cookie and talk, talked with them and. So that was really fun. The class was interesting. I don't know how much boucle spinning I'm going to do, but mm-hmm. it's nice to have that. It's nice to know how. And I did bring home some additional uh, mohair top that I'm going to, I think I'll try mm-hmm. to spin a little bit more. I do need to wash what I made because it was a class from um, JC Boggs Faulkner. And, mm-hmm. and she said, you have to, you have to wash it before it ev- ever looks like anything. First of all, your first okay. uh, boucle spinning is not going to be good, and you shouldn't expect it to be good because you're just learning. And second of all, mm-hmm. it it always looks better after it's washed. So mm-hmm. I ne- I still need to wash mine. So I'll report back about the boucle yarn uh, maybe next time. Mm-hmm. But it was a it was a fun it was a it was fun to learn something new. And the best thing I learned was about the Ply Spinning Guild. So mm. Ply Magazine, who basically is JC, um, has a spinning guild that they're start that they're starting. It's kind of like the Jane Stafford Guild for weaving. Mm-hmm. In fact, is is very much like it because she said she and Jane had many many conversations about how she would do it and she's using this a similar platform $85 for a year i bought it 
I I heard about it. Uh-huh. I love the Jane Stafford one. You watch the videos. There are projects you can follow along with the projects. I thought I would. I think I'd like to do it. It just sounded like a lot of fun. So, so I went mm-hmm. ahead and bought it. And I haven't watched any of the videos yet. Um, maybe I'll do that today while I um, while I do that weaving. I'll put on some of those spinning videos, and you know they're they're kind of going in order. So the early videos are probably. Mostly things that I know, but good reminder. And then I think that they have some um, interactive, uh, you know, like forums or discussions or something. I haven't ever used that feature of the Jane Stafford Guild because I just pop onto her Ravelry group. But that might be mm-hmm. kind of that might be kind of fun, just to just to interact with some with some spinners. Um, who are also doing this guild. So anyway, and anybody who's interested, there's a link in the show notes. Um, you, you go to the Ply Magazine, um, go to the Ply Magazine front page, and there's a place where you can sign up for for okay. the Ply Spinning Guild. But I okay. think that's a really good deal. Yeah, the, no, it sounds fun. I'll check it out. The weaving one is 99 or 100, I think, maybe 110. Mm. Um in U.S. dollars, right around is right around a hundred dollars for a year, and I get a lot of value out of that. So I think I'm going to get a lot of value out of the the ply spinning guild too. So anyway, that's the class and my lunch with new friends, um, mm-hmm. and then I met Alyssa who lives up there, and she lives in, in mm-hmm. she lives near my dad, um, and mm-hmm. she and her daughter Abigail were there. We sat in the same little uh, shady, beautiful shady area and chatted for a while. Her other two kids were there too, which is super funny because one of them is graduated and, you know, graduated high school. The other one is graduating. So they're all grown up. And I remember when I first Mm -hmm. met her, she had, you know, the three kids in tow and they were all so young. It's like, oh my God, I've been going to Lambtown for quite a while, I guess. I hadn't really realized (laughs) So, and then over the course of the the weekend, you know, I saw I saw um, Patty and Linda from the Anne's Web Group down here. I saw Tracy. Oh, I, I'll tell you more about Tracy. She was a big enabler, little town knitter. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Tracy and Barb from the Two Knitla Chicks, and Gail and Charlene were there from the Yarniacs, and Celia was there. Um, Hetty had her sock machine there. She did a crank along. Yeah, which was I saw it on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, really cool. There were I don't know half a dozen or more people there with sock machines. Marsha, that is super tempting. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I, I don't envision myself really using it that often, but just the mechanics of those machines mm-hmm. just super tempting. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so that was fun to see Hetty, um, and 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 we went to dinner. H- Hetty and Tracy and I went to dinner that night, and then I went to breakfast with Dagmar. She was there. She camped. Mm-hmm. I went to breakfast with her the next uh, on Sunday morning before I left. Um, she was headed off to see the eclipse. Um, oh right! So yeah. she was making a big loop around. And hitting um, hitting Lambtown, and then into a one of the parks where they were, where she would, you know, have a really good view of the eclipse. Mm-hmm. So yeah, saw a lot of people. It was it was a lot of fun. And then let me tell you about Tracy, little town mm-hmm. knitter. <laughs> <laughs> I ran mm-hmm. into her. I I thought I had missed basically missed most of the. Um, the wool sale because I had been in class during the morning when they did the show, when typically they would do the, the wool judging in the morning and then the, and then have the wool sale. It was always a small, fairly small judging show. And then, you know, this, so the sale would start and, and it would be pretty quick. And so it was late afternoon and I head over there 
and I see Tracy outside the building and she's, she's like, yeah, they're kicking us out. Um, they're kicking us out. The judging is over and, and they're going to get ready to do the sale. So I thought, mm -hmm. oh, okay. When does the sale start? I'm not going to buy a fleece, but if you're waiting for that, I'll sit and talk to you. So, so we sat and talked outside the building for almost probably 45 minutes. And she was one of the first people in line at, you know, right outside the door to get, to get back in. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to buy a fleece. I'm like, well, I'm not going to buy a fleece, but I'll sit here and talk to you. <laughs> so we sat and talked. Mm -hmm. and then, Famous last words. Yes. And then she's like, well, come on. <laughs> come in, you have to see the fleeces. So I, I want you to look at some of the stuff that I'm interested in getting. And so we go in and we look and she was wanting to get, now I can't remember what she was looking at, but she, she looked at this one and then she's like, Oh no, that wait, that's not, that's not what I'm looking for. This is a Shetland. And mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, this is really interesting, this fleece, because she's like, it's so soft, this one part. And so I was feeling it. And this is really interesting because this part of the fleece is really soft and kind of short, not not too short, but shorter fiber, softer fiber. And then this other part are these long locks that look kind of like Icelandic fleece, you know, the, mm -hmm. the long pointy locks. And uh, Shetlands mm -hmm. look like that, too. But it didn't have the double fiber. You know how in the one judging um, that we were at where the Judith was judging where she took the two pieces and pulled them apart? And you could see the long fiber in the of the primitive breed and then the short fibers mm -hmm. were there. This right. one doesn't have any of the yeah. short fibers in that part. It just has the long ones, long silky fibers. It's like this is really mm -hmm. interesting fleece. But no, Tracy, this isn't the the breed you're looking for. And so we go around, we're looking, she's like, you need to get something. You should get this one. Like, no, Tracy, I'm not going to get a fleece. Oh, here's another one I'm going to get, you know, so she picks out hers. And then I keep going back to that Shetland and looking at it and feeling mm -hmm. it. And it's like, it's only, it's like three pounds. It's small. It's mm -hmm. tiny. Mm -hmm. and then I finally put it back. <laughs> And then pretty soon here comes Tracy <laughs> with the bag. She's like, you have to get this. <laughs> it's only $35. You have to get this. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay. So so I got the fleece. And then the funny thing is, it, it wasn't one of the judged fleeces. It was just one of the ones for sale. So we get in line mm -hmm. and she's buying her fleeces. And and then I, you know, I go up to the register. And the judge for the day was... Um, Amy from Ross Farms, and mm -hmm. of course she has Shetlands, and she's like, uh, and she says to me, "Oh my gosh, you're taking that fleece? That's the one I wanted to buy, you know." And we're laughing, and I said, "Well, you can buy it from me. I'll I'll sell it to you." Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and and she said, "No, you know, I have a hundred. I have a hundred uh, actual fleeces on sheep at home, or something like that." And she mm -hmm. said that really is an interesting that really is an interesting fleece. So that sort of validated my feeling that I was getting something worth <laughs> worth adding to yeah. the stash, right? Yeah. Not just yeah. another same old, same old. So so this Shetland fleece, I um laid it all out. I took the softest part that's up at the top top, like around the neck area. I took the softest part, and that's a, it's a small, I think it's maybe nine ounces, something like that, mm -hmm. of that fleece. And that's what I put into the Swint bath for this week. Okay. So that went into the Swint okay. bath 10 or, again, when I took out the Romney, so almost two weeks ago, that went into the Swint bath. And then I took it out yesterday. Okay. And it was starting to grow algae on the top of the swim bath, which I don't think is right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it doesn't make my fleece green, stain my mm -hmm. fleece. I, yeah, who knows? Um, who knows? But I, so no. I took it out. I didn't see any green. I rinsed it and I've spread it out on the spread it out on the um the screen and it wasn't dry last night. So again, I left it on the screen and then it was drizzling this morning. So it's mm -hmm. all wet again. 
and it'll sit out today. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long I'll leave it out there, but I'll I'll have to see how this one smells compared to the the Romney. And maybe once it's done, I'll take all three of them and do the sniff test. Like have them, you know, get the bags out and do a sniff test with all three of them um, and see mm -hmm. what I think. So that's my swim bath project. It's the perfect project interesting. for it's a your, busy person just, because every two weeks you do something and then you forget about it. <laughs> it's like a science project out yeah. there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I was when you were talking about buying that fleece, I was just thinking on your headstone, it's going to say, I'm not buying another fleece. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I like that. I like that. I'm not buying another fleece. Well, I'm just, I'm just, or I'm just, I'm, just I'm definitely not buying another fleece after I'm dead. <laughs> That's true. So that would be perfect. That's the only <laughs> time that will be true. <laughs> I guess you could, it could be, now I can't buy another fleece. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, no, there were some okay. really pretty, there were some really pretty fleeces there. And the prices, mm -hmm. the prices were good too. Um, I think some of them were fleeces that I had seen already at the Monterey County. Oh yeah, they probably just bring if they up don't there, sell, right? yeah, sense. yeah, and then sense, yeah, and then one of the growers that I talked to after the Monterey County will show Marsha Baranaga, um, she was having a hard time getting anyone to get in touch with her because she wanted to enter fleeces in Lambtown, and mm -hmm. I, I, I said, you know, it's, it's really worth. I think it's really worth making another effort to try to get your fleeces there because it is going to be, you know, it is becoming more of a destination now that, mm -hmm. now that there's no stitches. It was bigger. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, enormous, huge, but it was bigger than I remember it being. Mm -hmm. And so that would be, that would be good. It will, I think it, I think it has the potential to way more vendors. It felt like mm -hmm. than they, than there used to be but i didn't spend mm -hmm. a whole lot of time huh. inside of the the vendor halls i bought a yeah. basket yeah. let's see i'm trying to think what did mm -hmm. i bring home i brought one um one thing home from greenwood fiber a braid and a basket mm -hmm. and then the fleece and i think that's it i think that's the only thing i bought okay so a lot of restraint kelly until the end, when I bought the fleece. <laughs> mm, yeah, I know. Well, that's not your fault. That's Tracy. That's, I'll blame that all on Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really try not to buy one. So, anyway. I, yeah. So, well, it'll be interesting to see how this spins up, too. Mm hmm. You know? Mm hmm. So, yeah. Right. I'm, I'm proud of myself that it's already washed. At least mm -hmm. a portion of it is already oh, yeah. washed. So, yeah. Yeah. So, what about your projects, Marsha? Um, well, the only thing I'm just, I, uh, I've not done any spinning. Um, I'll talk about it later, but I'm going to a retreat. So I'm planning on bringing my spinning project, um, and try and finish spinning up those, um, cause I'm almost done spinning the, um, the braids mm -hmm. and I, I'm looking here in the show notes. I don't have the name of the fiber, but it was also from that Greenwood fiber works. Yeah. Two braids were from there, and the other one was from Seattle Dye Works. Seattle pink. Dye Works, yeah, yeah. Um, um, not picked up the tea cozy, not picked up the laundry line, not picked up my socks. Okay, um, you're so. slacking. You can't have no <laughs> projects when I have no projects. <laughs> when I have no projects, but, you have to be working hard on something. <laughs> yes. Um, but I have to say, I've been working on the snow flower, the pullover color work yoke oh, sweater good. by Heidi Kermeyer. And I think the last time we talked, I was working on the ribbing around the, of the body. I finished that and I finished the first sleeve and I'm, oh, three quarters of the way done on the second sleeve. Oh my gosh. So you are almost finished. Yeah, I'm almost finished. I'm, I'm, I'm working. Like I, and so I'm working on that. Um, I also am, uh, and I'll, in a minute, I'll tell you I'm why I'm now swatching for another sweater. So I did swatches 
for either I'm going to make Little Love by Anka Strick. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I never know if I'm pronouncing that the right way. And um, I was going, I swatched with Brooklyn Tweed Loft in kind of a, a charcoal color. In fact, I think it's actually called cast iron, uh, kind of a not quite black, but way darker than gray. Yeah. And and then um, and this is because I'm these are all things from my stash. I just I have you know, we've talked about this before. I have a lot of sweater quantities in my mm-hmm. stash. So it's time to start knitting that and not buy anything. So um, and then the other thing I swatched for was um a sweater called Fine Sand. I actually made it before out of a uh, linen cotton. Uh, and it's one of those sort of, um, it's just a, it's not really a raglan sleeve, but it's. But it's like an open yeah, front. It's very, Is that the open front kind open, of? Yeah, kind open, yeah, open front shape, and very drapey. A. Yeah, and I really, a. really like that sweater. And so it's the the designer is also Heidi Kermeyer. And I swatched using West Yorkshire Spinners Illustrious. And it's kind of a red color, a really beautiful red. Mm, nice. That, and I actually bought that uh, in Edinburgh. I don't remember the name of the shop, but, but I bought it there because I really like the color. And it's, um, I don't have it here in front of me, but it's, um, uh, I believe it's Falkland wool and alpaca. Oh, wow. So it should, it's like, I think it's almost, I, I don't have the percentages right, but it's almost like 50, 50 or 60, mm-hmm. 40. So quite a bit of alpaca. So I think for this sweater, it will be good it'll drape quite a bit because of the alpaca yeah um but because i think with those op- uh, sweater like this you don't want to have something that's really springy because then like the fronts will curl and um so anyway i'm going to cast on that um one of those next i'm not sure which and then um i have to talk about daphne's skull <laughs> so i finished i fi- have I don't remember where I was the last time we recorded, but I had finished all of the 16 teeth for the upper jaw. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was actually driving over to the Ballard house to meet with the tenants about the garage. When I had this thought that came into my, like, why is we think these things when we're doing something completely random that has absolutely nothing to do with knitting. But I all of a sudden I thought to myself, I don't like knitting on that thing. I, I don't want to do it. I it, it felt like a burden uh-huh. during this skull because I said I want to get it done by Halloween. Yeah. And so, and and I, because I have to finish knitting it, I have to sew it together. I have to do the eye sockets. I have to <laughs> felt it. I have to dry it. I have to stuff. And all of a sudden I thought, it's too much. Yeah. It's just too much. I'm not enjoying this. I don't like this well, pressure Well, you only have so, 10 days now. Less than ten days. That's just yeah. yeah. And this was a week ago. Okay. I did, I like if I had really applied myself, I probably could do it. But I realized I did not like that pressure of mm-hmm. having to be done. And it's one thing to be like I'm hoping to finish this sweater um, for a trip I'm going to take, but I um, I don't have to think so much on this on the second. So I've already knit the first sleeve, so now I'm knitting the second one. I'm just following what I did on the first one. Um, there's not so much thinking where that yeah. skull, it's just too much for my brain at this point with all of the things that have been going on and getting ready to go out of town and it just was too much. Mm-hmm. So Daphne's not going to be done for Halloween. Uh, <laughs> maybe next Halloween, like maybe now I'll just work on it when I don't feel the pressure. Yeah. But you know, when you feel that pressure, it just like suddenly it became like, ugh, I just, I, I wouldn't even, what was happening is I knew I needed to knit on that. But I didn't want to knit on that, so I didn't even knit. Right. And that's when I realized this is not working right now. There's too much pressure. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's what's going on with my projects. Okay. Um, well, I can understand that feeling because I started to feel that way about the blanket after I spilled the wine on it and was feeling like I mm-hmm. needed to get it done so I could wash it. Um, yeah. oh, well, and the baby is now four months old. Um, yeah. Did that wine come out? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. It it, it washed up yeah, really so, nicely. Yeah. But I know that feeling it's just a, of that time pressure. Yeah. It's an interesting thing about um the interesting thing about knitting too is I realize it has to be something that you want to do. I find that the projects that I feel somewhat burdened by 
like the tea cozies for Brian. And I like it's not that I didn't want to do them. Mm-hmm. It's just that I it was hanging over my head that I had to do them for him. And the same thing that sweater for my brother. He's not asked one single question about that sweater. Like right. when are you going to get it done? But I know I need to get that color work sweater done for him out mm-hmm. of that uh, that uh Farrowee's yarn. Anyway, I uh there's something about that that makes it difficult to knit when you know that you have to knit it for someone who's sort of waiting for it. Um, and then this, this pressure, the self-imposed pressure trying to get it done for Halloween was, yeah. Anyway, so it'll get done. And I kind of want to get back to my Santa's laundry line. And I'm going to do a couple of little projects, too, I'm going to try and do for. Now, I'm say, I just said I didn't want to have these deadlines and pressure, but I'm going to make a, um, some hats. Uh, mm-hmm. will go pretty quickly um, for Christmas presents. So anyway. Well, yeah, and you have plenty of yet. time for that. It's like when the yeah, when the I deadline do. is looming close. Yeah. And yeah. If, well, and I think, I think part of it is because you know there's a really good chance you're going to fail. And no one likes to do something mm-hmm. that they're not going to be successful at. Right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I found, too, with the skull, because I was avoiding it, and then when I would sit down to work on it, I felt like uh, I was rushing through it. Yeah. And then I think I – and when you do that, then you make mistakes. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, anyway. Yeah, number one, you um, can't enjoy it, even if you could yeah. end up enjoying it if you're rushing, and then you make mistakes, and that makes it even less – even less mm-hmm. enjoyable. No, I totally yeah. under – I totally understand that. Yeah. So anyway, and then, um, so that's it for projects and then events, Kelly, do you want, you're going to be at an event, a non knitting event, but there'll be knitting going on, right? I will be knitting. Yes. Um, yes. I'm going to the Pismo beach trailer rally, uh, November 2nd through 5th and on Saturday, which is November 4th is the open house. So mm-hmm. I don't know if we have any listeners who live in the area, but if if any of you um, live in the area and on Saturday, November 4th, you want something to do, they have an open house for the whole trailer, you know, all the whole trailer rally. So mm-hmm. all the people with their vintage trailers um, participate in this open house for the public. Uh, so mm-hmm. feel free, come on over. Um, to the Pismo yeah. Coast Village RV Park on the 4th of November and take a look at all the really cool vintage trailers. And and um, when you get tired of looking at the vintage trailers, come sit with me and knit. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's mm-hmm. going on. I hope to get some time at the beach with the dogs because, you know, that, that beach is right there that, that we um, took the took Bailey to. And I think Barry mm-hmm. is is... He's at the point where he could actually, I could reliably take him, not both of them at the same time, but I could reliably take him, um, not mm-hmm. taking him off leash, but he's doing really well. So, so I'm looking forward to that. We're, um, well, we're, we're actually, um, taking the extra day at the end, you know, not coming home right right when it ends taking just mm-hmm. an extra night so that'll be nice it'll be re- relaxing and and mm-hmm. a little nice little um a nice little break i have my school schedule well, set up I, so that i'm able to i'm able to to do that i can you know do whatever i need to mm-hmm. do from there um remotely for a couple of meetings and then and then just have a nice little break so that'll be good well and i went with you last year and it kind of was busy. There really was not a lot of time to right. um, knit or spin. We did some, but um, between taking the dogs to the beach, looking at the trailers, uh, there was that thing in the evening where you could go around to all the different trailers and get food. Yeah, there's that was super yeah, fun. There's a and trailer crawl. Pancake breakfast yeah. and the taco bar. And like there were so many activities yeah. um, that. Yeah, so it'll be nice having that extra day too, um, mm-hmm. to maybe just sit and relax a little bit. So, yeah, very nice. Well, I have a couple things. So the Seattle Weavers Guild, I talked about this in the last episode, but they're having their 
sale where uh, members are selling their hand-woven items. And that's uh, Thursday, October 26th from 5 to 8, Friday the 27th from 10 to 8, and Saturday the 28th from 10 to 4 at Blodell Hall in at St. Mark's Cathedral up on Capitol Hill. So there's a link in the show notes. And um, I'm going to be there volunteering. And then um, I'm going to, I was invited by my friend Kim to join her at the Fort Ward Knitters Retreat. Um, That's November 1st through 5th in Port Townsend, Washington. And um, Fort Warden is an old military base that they've converted into like retreat center. And you can also rent like all of the different um, officers houses are now for rent. So this Um, is the one that was the, the, where they filmed officer and a gentleman, right? Officer and a gentleman. Yeah. 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 I remember going there shortly after that movie Mm -hmm. visiting there. It's really pretty. Mm Mm-hmm. And, uh, she said it's been fixed up quite a bit when they, they, she's been going to this retreat for 20, 25 years, a long time. Oh, wow. And I was never able to go because Ben's birthday is November 2nd. So Halloween, mm-hmm. October 31st, but for little kids, as I always say, that's a high holy day, you know, for little <laughs> kids. And then, um, and then his birthday is November 2nd, but he's turning 26. And he doesn't care anymore. In fact, so, you know, he, he doesn't care about Halloween anymore and he doesn't care about his birthday. He doesn't much. need so we're you gonna, to celebrate actually, his birthday. Yeah. No, no. So we're going to, um, uh, yeah, but I could never go when he was a little kid. You know, I couldn't mm-hmm. be gone, you know, for Halloween and his birthday. No way. Right. So, um, and he's, so we're going to, we're going to get together and celebrate before I leave. But anyway, so I'm going to be at that. And, um, and then I'm home for two days and I leave, um, for Washington, D.C., November 8th, and I return on the 17th. So I'll be there, um, yeah, from November 8th through 17th. And I've been, you know, Kelly, I've been planning this trip, f- or I've been talking about this trip for a really long time because I've never been to Washington, mm-hmm. Washington D.C. And um, I actually had planned this for October, but I canceled it and rescheduled it for November because there was that looming government shutdown which ended not, not not happening, but it was really down to the wire. And so I just um, shifted everything to November. So um, I've got some tours scheduled of the, I have a tour of the Library of Congress scheduled in the, um, the Capitol. Um, I figured out, I've contacted my representative and my senator to get tickets to the, or not tickets, their passes to the visitors gallery for the House and the Senate. Mm-hmm. So I can... Um, nice. See firsthand what's going on. <laughs> that. And as I, and I said to you, um, if you hear about a middle-aged woman uh, slapping um, somebody, <laughs> that's me. So please start a GoFundMe for, to for my bail. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I'm really excited about it. And then I, th- I've always wanted to see the Smithsonian. So I've, figured out which days I'm going to be doing all of that. And some of the, um, the one I really want to see is the African American history museum. And that one you have to get a, uh, they're free. Everything's free, but you need to get a time ticket for mm-hmm. entry. So I've got that. And um, yeah, I'm just getting everything planned and I am going to go to fiber space on Thursday that I'm there for their knit night. Um, and fiber spaces in, in Alexandria. And I'm actually staying in Alexandria because my understanding, it's really easy just to take the metro into D.C. from there. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of excited about this. That's good. You're going to have a good time. Yeah. Well, and you're going to try to go I to Looped wish I, too, right? Yes, I'm going to try and go to Looped. And I was looking, we were looking at their website before we started recording. It doesn't look like they have a knit night anymore. So I will contact them. I'll send them an email or if any of our listeners know, uh, you know, let me know. And um, because I'm going to try and go to that. I'm at least going to go to the store anyway to look. Because when I was Um, there, yeah, when I, I've been there a few times in the, when I was in Washington, D.C. for the long period of time, I actually, um, I actually did make it there while there was a group sitting. And I can't remember if it was actually a knitting, you know, like a knit night or a knit, day 
um, a regular thing or if it just happened that there were people sitting and knitting when I arrived at the shop. So, but anyway, I sat mm-hmm. and I sat and knit with people for a little while mm-hmm. there. But yeah, I and I still have that yarn. I haven't done anything with it. The yarn I bought there. That's part of my older stash now. Hmm. I should probably mm-hmm. think about getting. I have a hand spun skein. You should get it out and get it on the needle. I should because because um, I have a hand spun skein. I have two skeins. It's a burgundy color. It's really pretty. And then a hand spun skein that matches it really well. That's like burgundies and golds. And I've been mm-hmm. meaning to do something with that combination for for a while, for a while now. So mm-hmm. I should I should dig that out. I have quite a few things kind of lined up in my mind. I just you know how the starting part of it you have to have some you have to have some yeah. time yeah. and energy put into kind of getting ready to start something. So mm-hmm. maybe that will be the next thing that I that I drag out. I don't know. I got to get yeah, some weaving I, on the loom. Oh my gosh, it's the weave uh-huh. along. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to. The reason why I, I really am trying to now finish this, the snow flower, is I think like, I'd like to take it with me to to DC. I don't know how cold it's going to be there, mm-hmm. but um, I kind of wanted to bring it. And then I also, because I'm going to this retreat, I don't want to start a new project there. I'd like to get make my decision about which sweater I'm going to start so I could start it at home mm-hmm. and then kind of get, cause there's nothing, I think it's just really hard to start a new project like that. Um, for me anyway, it's kind of hard to start a new project when there's a lot of activity going right. on. Um, and you, you know, could and just, and, you know, you could just lock yourself in your room at the retreat and get it started. But what's the yeah. fun of that, right? You want to be out with everybody. And <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> so yeah, better to better to do the lock yourself in your room part at home. Yeah. Thinking of this retreat space or the Fort Warden. Um, and I was thinking about uh, the Knockers retreat at San Juan Batista, which we love that retreat, but the rooms, uh, you know, the, I don't know if it was last, this past time or two years ago when we were there, the, I think it was the first year we were there after the pandemic. And remember the bottom sheet, the fitted sheet on the bed, it kept popping off yes. in the middle of the night. <laughs> and I was laughing because Kim said, there's a few things that she brings that um because we it's different we each have our own rooms at this retreat but uh, we don't have a bathroom in the room you have to go down the hall so she said she likes to bring like uh flip-flops for the shower um she likes to bring like a, a electric tea kettle so she can make coffee um because it looks like it sounds like they don't have a uh uh like at knockers we have sort of that kitchen area where you could yeah. make coffee and whatnot they don't really have that, it sounds like. So she brings an electric tea kettle to make tea and coffee. but um, And, of course, wine, et cetera. But um, she also brings her own sheets. <laughs> and so I have actually thought, you know what? I think I think maybe I'm going to pack my own sheets. <laughs> so because uh, she said they have all of that there. But she just is, you know, I mean, as we all get, I think when we get Sometimes we get a little particular, you know, mm-hmm. and when she said that, I thought, oh, you know, like I, I have the car. It's not like I'm f- flying. I'm just going to be in my car. I can load as much stuff you as I want. You can bring whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Yeah. So anyway, it's just kind of funny. I'm actually going to bring <laughs> my own sheets. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was really that time with the sheets um, in the hotel. I mean, that was really bizarre. Those sheets that didn't oh, go that down to the bottom. Yes, I'd forgotten about that. That was at the. That was at the. At stitches. Is that the Mary? Is that yeah. the Sheraton? Or I can't remember now which hotel we were staying oh, at. But yeah, yes, it was like they had short sheeted the bed, kind of. <laughs> no, but you know, like the yeah, the sheet like the bottom twelve inches of the bottom the bottom sheet did not cover the mattress. Yeah, yeah, it was. So your feet were just like on the mattress pad, and it's like. That's weird. It was very weird. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like they couldn't afford longer sheets or something. <laughs> I don't know. The beds got bigger, but the and sheets that was, stayed the same size. 
<laughs> yeah, you're like at the at the San Juan Batista. Like I am not. Like, I have no criticism right. at all of that because it's a, it's a retreat center mm-hmm. and it's they don't have a ton of money, but a hotel, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, <laughs> kind of odd. Uh, oh. Yeah, kind of odd. Anyway. <laughs> Well, anything else we need to talk about? I think that's probably it. I'm looking okay. forward to going as soon as I, I'm not even dressed yet this morning. And I think what I'm going to do is as soon as we get done, I might not even get dressed. I, I, um, I'm, I'm just going to take this computer and I'm going to go watch my video and I'm going to make some of those little squares. Okay. All right. I'm not even going to put my socks back on needles. I'm just going to let them sit there for a little while and think about what they did. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm going to go, I'm actually going to go down and I had people over for dinner last night, but um, I put everything in the dishwasher, but I wash up all the wine glasses Mm -hmm. by hand. So I have to go wash those up and I'm going to take the dog for a walk. And then Kim is coming over this afternoon for weaving. Oh, good. Um, so you, um, so you are at least doing weaving during the winter weave along. Well, I'm not, doing not your weaving. own, but She's doing the weaving. that can count. <laughs> that can count. You're providing moral okay. support. I'm keeping her company. Yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of interested too. I'm going to text. I didn't know what time. Well, she's not texted back. She said she's coming, but she didn't say what time, but I'm going to, uh, when I know what time she's coming, I'm going to, my neighbor, uh, also Tracy, two doors down. Um, she used to work at Tricote. It's a oh, yeah. yarn shop. I I don't even know. I think it's still around in Seattle. I don't know. But she used to work there years ago. And uh, but so she's a knitter, sewer, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I saw her the other day when I was walking Enzo, and she is um, making a sweater with. Um, there was a sweater that she bought online, uh, a hand knit sweater, and she really liked it. And when it arrived, um, she said it was too big. Um, it had some stains and she said it was ever so slightly felted. So what she did is she unraveled it. And then she also had a cashmere sweater that she got because she does a lot of thrift store shopping. Mm-hmm. And she found a cashmere sweater that she's unraveled the cashmere sweater and she's holding the two yarns together and she's knitting a sweater. So I'm really interested to see um, her project. Oh, um, yeah. That sounds interesting. So two... Two recycled sweaters. Very um, cool. Yeah. And uh, so she said it's really hard to find now cashmere sweaters at the thrift store. Because I, I said, I remember talking to a woman who was buying cashmere sweaters and unravel, un, it's so hard to say, unraveling. Unraveling. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> unraveling them uh and what she said at the time is that because cashmere is such an expensive fiber they just don't um knit on a a machine loom yardage and then cut the pieces out and sew them together Mm. they actually knit them in the shape of the sleeve the shape of the body and then sew them together so you're able to a commercially made sweater, cashmere sweater, you're actually able to take the pieces apart and then unravel them. Mm-hmm. Because if if it was just cut from knitted fabric, so to speak, you would just end up with little pieces of yarn, right? Right. Because right. Uh, every piece is de- every thread is cut. It's um, so that's so. I remember I went to the this is years ago, but I went to the Goodwill and thrift stores looking for cashmere sweaters and I couldn't find anything. Uh, Cause I think people are buying them to uh, repurpose, right. you know, um, cause it's such an expensive fiber anyway. So hopefully she'll be, he'll be able to come over and I can see your project and I can report in next time. And that'll be fun. Um, we should also say, uh, I don't know if we said this, I know we said at the beginning of the podcast that we're not going to edit it, you're just going to put it out. I don't think we said, Kelly, that um, because I'm going to the retreat and um, I'm going to DC, you're going to the rally, you got uh, work negotiation stuff going on, we're probably not going to edit the next few episodes. It's yeah. we're just going to um, record when we can fit them in and just put them out. Um because we kind of, we want to keep on schedule, but with all of our different activities, there really won't be time for you to do a lot of editing. That 
That's definitely true. Yeah. 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 So bear with us. We'll get back <laughs> on track after uh, in December, probably. Because um, November is going to be busy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have fun on your trip, Marsha. I, I mean, I know I will. I will. Um, yeah, we'll talk. Again, I will talk to you before you go podcast, to the retreat, yeah. but we won't. We won't ha- yeah. have the podcasting before the retreat. So, looking forward to hearing so about it. So, I guess I would, it, if um, people people can make in the when you post this episode in the discussion thread, if people have any suggestions about things I should do, um, I'm going to do all of. I mean, the standard touristy things because that's why I'm going. Mm-hmm. I want to see all the the Smithsonian and and um, all the tourist things. Um, but if you have a something interesting I should not miss in terms of fiber or restaurants or some unknown museum or house that's really special. The textile museum. Um, you should see that. Oh, there's a oh, there's a textile museum. Yeah. I, okay. Long ago when I when we podcasted and I was in Washington, DC, I I did my ver my side this was back when we were podcasting separately and pu- stitching them together. Um, I podcasted a little bit about the textile museum, but yeah, you should, re- you should go to the textile museum. Okay. okay. And then I sent you a, a, a link to the Instagram um, for the USDA yes. and their cafeteria. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I would suggest the cafeteria at <laughs> USDA and the textile museum. Those would be my two suggestions to okay. add to your, to your list. Well, and I'm going to, I've got my time ticket to get into, as I said, the Mm African-American History Museum. Um, But there's also a restaurant in there. um, Oh, yeah. I think it's called Sweet Sweet Home or something like that. And that you need a time ticket to get into that. But when I, uh, the time, when I got the time ticket to get into the museum, they had not released dates yet for the cafe, the the lunchroom. So I Mm -hmm. need to go back and see if they're available um, because I would like to eat there too. So. Good yeah, food. I'm really looking forward to Lots it. of good food. Yeah. 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 That's what I've heard. Um, so, all right. Um, I think well, we'll record one more time before I head mm-hmm, out to D.C. Mm-hmm. So, um, but anyway. All right. Do we have anything else? I don't think so. Okay. Well, then I guess we'll say goodbye. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Okay. <laughs> bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit 2usefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the 2us doing doing our our part part for World Fleece. Fleece.